Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. As we covered in the previous video, a red black tree is a type of self balancing binary search tree that's widely used in computer science and software engineering. The main advantage of red black trees is that they automatically maintain balance, which helps ensure efficient operations. However, when you insert or delete nodes, the tree's balance can get disrupted. To restore that balance, we need two main operations, recoloring and rotations. And among these, rotations play a key role in adjusting the tree's structure and keeping it balanced. To really understand red-black tree insertion and deletion, it's essential to first get a good grasp of rotations. In this video, we'll break down left and right rotations and walk through the code that implements them. Let's start with an example of a left rotation. Imagine we have a tree where the root node is 17. Node 17 has a left child, which we'll call A, and a right child, 50. Node 50, in turn, has two children, B on the left and C on the right. For simplicity, we won't focus on node colors in this demonstration. We're just looking at the structural changes during the rotation. To make it easier to compare, I'll also copy this subtree over to the left side. Let's now perform a left rotation on node 17. After the rotation, 50 moves up and becomes the new root of this subtree, while 17 moves down and becomes 50's left child. Additionally, 50's original left child, B, is now reassigned as 17's right child. After these adjustments, the tree's structure is updated, but it still maintains the binary search tree properties. Now, let's call the subtree before the rotation T1 and the subtree after the rotation T2. If you look closely, you'll notice that T1 and T2 are symmetric. In fact, if we perform a right rotation on T2's root, which is 50, the subtree would revert back to T1. So, a right rotation is essentially just the reverse of a left rotation. Once you understand how left rotation works, right rotation becomes pretty straightforward. Next, let's take a look at the Java code for red-black trees to understand how rotations are implemented. But before diving into the left rotate method, let's first walk through how the node and red-black tree classes are defined. In the node class, each node has a data field to store its value, along with left and right pointers for its left and right children and a parent pointer for its parent node. There's also a color field that keeps track of the node's color, which is defined by the color enum and can either be red or black. One thing you'll notice is that, unlike regular binary search trees, red-black tree nodes store a reference to their parent. This is done to make insertions deletions, and rotations more efficient by allowing for quicker backtracking and adjustments. In the constructor of the node class, newly inserted nodes are set to red by default. Why is that? It's because red nodes make it easier to maintain balance in a red-black tree. Plus, having red nodes allows us to use recoloring or rotations to fix any violations that might come up. Now, let's take a look at the red-black tree class in this class, the root represents the tree's root node, and nil is a sentinel node that represents empty nodes. The nil node is always black. By using nil as a placeholder for leaf nodes, we simplify the code by reducing the need for null pointer checks, and we also ensure that all leaf nodes are black. It's also important to note that nil is declared as final, which means there's only one instance of the nil node in the entire tree. This helps save storage and keeps things efficient. As you can see on the screen, this is a simplified red-black tree structure with just one nil node. And since the root node has no parent, we also set its parent to nil, ensuring consistency throughout the tree. Now, let's dive into the left rotate implementation. To make things easier to follow, let's assume that node 17 has a parent node, 100, and that 17 is the left child of 100. Let's break it down step by step. Suppose the subtree's root, which is passed into the function, is called x. First, we define a temporary variable y, which will point to the right child of x, in this case, node 50. 
Next, we make 50's left child, B, the right child of node 17. This keeps the binary search tree property intact. Then, if B is not nil, we update B's parent to point to X, which is node 17. After that, we update 50's parent to point to node 17's parent. Then, if node 17 is the root, then Y becomes the new root. Otherwise, based on whether node 17 is the left or right child of its parent, we update the parent's left or right child to point to 50. In this case, since node 17 is the left child of 100, node 50 moves up and becomes 100's left child. Finally, we make node 17 the left child of node 50 and update node 17's parent to point to 50. Once we've completed all these steps, the left rotation is done. Essentially, Y, the right child, moves up, the original root X moves down, Y's left child becomes X's right child, and the related pointers are adjusted to maintain the tree's structure. The right rotation works in the opposite way to the left rotation. You can think of the right rotate method as the mirror image of left rotate, with a symmetric code structure. In the right rotation, node X, which is Y's left child, moves up, while node Y moves down. Additionally, X's right subtree becomes Y's left subtree, and we adjust the related pointers to complete the right rotation. Rotation operations have a time complexity of 01 because they only involve a constant number of pointer adjustments, and they don't impact the overall time complexity of the red-black tree. Understanding rotations provides a solid foundation for mastering insertion and deletion in red-black trees. In the upcoming videos, we'll dive deeper into red-black tree insertion and, through code examples, show how rotations and recoloring work together to maintain balance. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.